today we are going to talk about this most searched topic which is cervical cancer and answer one of the most searched questions on the internet regarding this topic. Hi, I'm Dr. Dhwani Mago, Senior Consultant at SCI International Hospital. So firstly, what are the most important risk factors for cervical cancer? So you know it is very important to understand that there are certain risk factors which you can possibly change and there are certain risk factors which cannot be changed. So let us start with the risk factors which you can possibly change. So the most important risk factor firstly is human papilloma virus. So this HPV virus is a very important and very dangerous virus. There are about 150 viruses uh, of this type and a few viruses cause HPV warts which are of low risk type. But the main uh, high risk HPV viruses, they are the culprits and they cause cervical cancer. So there are two kinds of HPV viruses. The low risk viruses cause warts uh, either in genital areas or around the lips or in anal areas. And the high risk viruses, uh, the high risk HPV virus is the one that is the culprit that is responsible for cervical cancer, anal cancer and even throat cancers in women. And in men, it can cause some penile cancers, anal cancers and throat cancers. So as of now, there is no treatment for this HPV virus, but you can take the prevention for this virus and that is the vaccines which are available. Well, the second risk factor we are going to talk about is smoking. In studies, it is seen that women who smoke are more prone to catch cervical cancers in life. Uh, the smoking changes the DNA of the cervical cells, which causes them to have this HPV virus in them for a prolonged time, leading to cervical cancer. Also, if your body's immunity is low, that means either you are on some, uh, if you are having some autoimmune disorder, or you are suffering from HIV or any immunodeficiency, you will be more prone to catch these viruses. Also, you must have a healthy diet like uh, fruits, vegetables, because this is what boosts your immunity. So in case you are again suffering from low immunity, you will catch this virus quickly. Also, it is seen that uh, young adults who are suffering from chlamydia, which is a sexually transmitted disease, even these people are more prone to catch cervical cancers. These uh, chlamydia bacteria, it makes the cervix more prone to have this HPV virus for a longer time. So these are some factors which you can possibly change. So another important risk factor is your sexual history. So it uh, makes a lot of difference if you have started having intercourse at a young age. It is seen that women who have intercourse at a young age are more prone to get cervical cancers later in life because it increases your uh, span of exposure to the HPV virus. Also, if you have multiple sexual partners or if your partner is at a higher risk, if he has multiple partners, then you will be more prone to get HPV virus. So another most commonly asked question is at what age is HPV vaccine recommended? Well, you know, it is recommended that you take this HPV vaccine as early as possible and we start giving it at nine years of age for girls and even for boys now, the Gardasil 9 vaccine which is launched is recommended. So for boys, the age group is between 9 to 26 years and for women, the age group, the span of the vaccine can be from 9 years up to 45 years. Although the efficacy of the vaccine decreases after 26 years of age. So uh, it is highly recommended that you start taking the vaccine earlier before you start having sexual intercourse. So uh, the third question which is most frequently searched is that what are the screening tests available for cervical cancer and how often should they be done? Well, for the screening, we recommend that you do your pap smears and your high risk uh, HPV virus testing every uh, once in five years. If we are combining these two tests, we can give you a gap of five years before we repeat your test. And uh, if you are only doing a pap smear, it is recommended that you repeat it once in three years. Well, the age group to start screening is from 25 years of age once and once you are sexually active. And it should be continued till you are 65 years of age. 
So a lot of people ask that what is exactly this pap smear and how does it help to detect cervical cancer? Well, you know, pap smear is a basically test of the uh, lower part of the uterus, that is the cervix. So what this is a model of the uterus and this is the lower part of the uterus that is called the cervix. So this is one organ that you cannot see, the women cannot see and only your gynecologist can see. So when we are doing your pap smear, a small brush is used and we just touch the cervix with that brush and send the superficial cells for examination. And here what we are looking for is any early changes in the cells of the cervix which can indicate that maybe you are more prone to get cervical cancers or in the future you may get a cervical cancer. So this will, you know, make you more alert and help us in treating or detecting cervical cancer at an early stage. So uh, patients want to know that what are the most common symptoms of cervical cancer? Well, you know, sometimes in early stages of cervical cancer, a person may not have any symptom. But uh, once the stage of the cancer advances, you may start having symptoms like prolonged uh, menstrual bleeding or intermenstrual spotting may happen or there may be bleeding after intercourse. Patient may complain of uh, pain in the pelvic region or pain while intercourse. Some patients also complain of postmenopausal bleeding. That is once you have completely stopped your periods and you start having bleeding again after menopause. Also patients may complain of a watery blood stain discharge, which is an alarm. And in case of any such symptoms, you must immediately go and see a gynecologist. So are there any genetic factors that increase the risk of cervical cancer? Well, yes, if your mother or your sister has had cervical cancer in the past, you are at a more uh, risk of getting cervical cancer compared to a person whose uh, family does not have any history of cancers. Also, people want to know that what is the next step once you are detected with an early stage of cervical cancer? Well, once we are suspicious or we detect on a pap smear that there are changes happening in your cervical cells, we proceed with doing a biopsy of the cervix. And also an MRI is done to detect the staging of the disease. Once the staging is done, on the basis of that, we decide whether a surgical therapy or radiotherapy or chemotherapy or immunotherapy is required. So people also want to know that what are the changes that you can bring in your lifestyle to prevent uh, getting cervical cancer later in life. Well, I will recommend that you get your screenings done regularly, that is your pap smears and your high risk HPV DNA testing. You must maintain an ideal body weight because again, in, according to the studies, it is seen that women who are obese have a little more risk of getting cervical cancer. Also, you must have a healthy diet, a healthy lifestyle, eat your fruits and vegetables uh, because that will boost your immunity and with a strong uh, immune response, you can prevent cervical cancer. You must avoid smoking and you must uh, avoid having multiple sexual partners and have safe intercourse or safe sex. So I hope this information helps and if you have any questions regarding this topic, you can get in touch with our team and we will answer all your queries. And also make sure that if you have young girls in your family which are above 9 years of age, you must get them vaccinated for HPV vaccine as soon as possible. Thank you.